Shalom, aloha, happy holy days. I'm getting ready now to do the new moon activation reading. It's a new moon eclipse. And because it's going to happen super early in the morning, I was feeling like maybe I should do it today. And it just felt like, yes, 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 green light, green light, go, go, go. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. And I'm going to turn on my little menorah here, you guys. Woo, woo, woo. Isn't that so awesome? This is like the best Hanukkah decoration I ever found. Yeah, 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 yeah. So happy fourth night of Hanukkah tonight. Merry Christmas, happy Kwanzaa, happy whatever you celebrate, happy new year, happy solstice, happy new moon solar eclipse. It feels really potent, the energy of this new moon, new beginning. It's good to see you guys all tuning in. So the new moon reading is always about what are we stepping into right now? What is this new cycle going to be about? But within every beginning is an end, and within every end is a beginning. So it's also going to show us what we're taking from this past month and everything that we learned. What are we leaving behind and what are we bringing in to this new cycle as we begin right now? I just love this solar eclipse new moon energy on this holy day. So powerful. So whenever you're ready, go ahead and put down all of the thoughts that have been looping in your mind. Just ask them to take a seat for this moment. So whatever it is, the excitement for the holidays or whatever plans you have later today or that new present you got or that you're giving to someone that you're so excited about or maybe some fears that you have or pains, discomfort, um, any suffering that you're carrying around the holiday times. Maybe maybe this time reminds you of somebody that you lost or maybe you feel alone this holiday season. But whatever those things are on the spectrum from sad to happy, just go ahead and put them down for this reading so that we can receive the wisdom in its fullest light so that we can receive it clearly without all of our filters so that later then we can go back and invite those thoughts to come back in and we can apply everything that we learn in this reading to those thoughts. That's the best way to do it. We want to hear this wisdom coming in from an unbiased perspective so that later when we go to piece it all together, we're doing it from a more grounded method. So go ahead and ask all those thoughts to just take a seat. We want to completely empty ourselves and be clear right now. And when you're ready, meet me in that place outside of time and space that's in the center of the center of the center of the heart. In that space, there's a ring of light. It's the all virtuous light of compassion. And all of the virtues that live within compassion, patience, acceptance, honesty, kindness, all of the virtues live within the virtue of compassion. They're like the rivers that lead to the ocean. And so when all of those virtues work together, they create a ring of light that lives inside of your heart. And that is where we meet. And those energies, those virtues, they each have an archetypal face as represented by these cards. So that's how we're going to connect to that ring of light through this deck right now, right now. So we give thanks in advance to the faces of the one, the archetypes of the one of which we are a part. Thank you for your wisdom. So what was the trophy that we gained from all of our hard work this past cycle? And what are we leaving behind? What did we complete? What is the challenge and gift of the cycle we're now stepping into? The one that's going to be the bridge to the future. And what is our hidden fear, but when transformed turns into our ally? <clears throat> Let's start there. Wow. We start the reading off with a major arcana card. So the world is the final card of the major arcanum. 
The Major Arcanum are the most powerful cards of the deck. And they tell a story from beginning to end, a journey of enlightenment. And the world is the culmination, the full culmination at the end. So what this shows me, being in the position of the card where I asked, what has paid off? What was all the work that we, that we did this past cycle? What was it all for? You know, what's the foot that we're starting off on in this new cycle? And we get the world. So I feel immediately what I feel is that we're starting off with a strong foundation. That we're stepping into this new cycle with everything that we need. There's no excuse we can make, or I don't have this, I don't have that, I still need to do this before I can do that. No. We've done the groundwork. We have prepared. We've shown ourselves that we can absolutely manifest a world that is in reflection of our inner world so long as we get clear in there. That's a beautiful card to start off with. Feeling this new year energy. You know, I celebrate the Jewish new year. I like to celebrate every new year, the Chinese new year. Every, every new year I learn something about because I see why those people chose that time of year to be that turning point. And it, they all make sense from a different angle. But now we're focusing on this new year, the Gregorian new year. So let's, let's milk it, <laughs> you know, let's make the best of it. <clears throat> and I feel that having the world as our foundation, the stone that we're going to step into the new with is very perfect. <clears throat> the challenge, which becomes the gift and the bridge to the future, is the Seven of Cups. And this is all about meditating on what is illusion and what is real. It's the suit of cups. So it's the heart. It's our emotions. So that can be tricky because anybody can look in from the outside at our life and say, oh, well, obviously this is what your heart really wants or that's what your heart really wants. And none of it matters because you have to feel it from the inside out. And even for ourselves, it's hard sometimes because the mind wants to say, oh, well, this thing is what's best for, my, for me and my heart. Or this thing is what's best because it's, it's what's best for the, the person or the people that I love, but you leave yourself out. So the best way to meditate and cut through the illusions of what you might have thought was best for your heart's path is to sit with it and say, what is for the highest good of one and all? What is the path I can choose that will fulfill my heart and simultaneously fulfill the heart of the one? Choosing a path that causes no harm to anyone, maybe even a path that brings total happiness to everyone, but remember that you can't always please everyone. So as long as you're not harming anyone, you have to go for what your heart desires. And when you meditate on each of those paths that you could potentially take, and you're honest with yourself when you consider the trajectory of each of those paths, you are the, the creator of your story. So you know, you know how each of those paths will go. And so when you sit there and you look down each of those roads, ask yourself, what success will come from each of those paths? And I mean, as far as the heart, how will you grow in love? What will you achieve down each of those roads? What would you potentially achieve down each of those roads? And how sustainable would that achievement be beyond this lifetime? Because it's not about temporary satisfaction. Think seven generations. How can you enjoy yourself in a way that is holy and sacred here now? How can you choose a path that is fulfilling, full of joy, but also sets the stage for a future of success for future generations, for seven generations, for beyond that? Because you can know this, that when you cut through the illusions of what you thought was going to make your heart happy and you choose that thing that's not only going to make you happy now, but the future you, the future generations that are born of you, happy when it makes 
every version of you happy across timelines. Know that you are choosing the highest path. It's like you're literally going to be elevated when you make this choice. Like we think that, oh, well, I I just really want this thing that will lead to temporary satisfaction. And I don't care that it's not going to really necessarily do anything for the seven generations. But at least it's not hurting them. Sure, you'll, you'll have some joy. You'll have some pleasure, whatever. But know this. If you choose the path that brings you joy here now and also brings a gift to the future, you will feel all of that right now. You will feel all of that goodness that's to come in the future right now within yourself. It's like God says, oh, I'm so proud of you for making that right choice and I'm going to lift you up and I'm going to make you feel greater than you thought you were going to feel had you chosen that lesser path. Because you chose this higher path and you thought of the future and you did something that was beyond yourself, you did something for what is beyond just yourself in this here now, I'm going to bless you over and over and over. You have to know that there is a reward for doing that. There is a reward for choosing to take that road that's going to bring not only you, but the future you, the future generations, happiness, prosperity, survival. That's what always feels the best. And so many people think that it's about instant gratification, but if only they knew what was on the other side of that holy choice to be selfless, to be of service, you think you're missing out. But my God, when you make that decision, the blessing is grand. And so that's what I see when I see this card. Overall, this card is all about meditating on matters of the heart, what is real and what is not. But what I see in regards to how this applies to the here and now, I see that it's about making those choices to be of service, to be selfless, to choose the path that's going to do right by the future versions of self and the past versions of self, to do the thing that will neutralize the pain of the past, bring us to that level of neutralization, and then rise us way above it what can we choose what path can we choose what road can we follow our heart down that will neutralize the past and exalt the future making us feel whole and happy and fulfilled right here right now knowing that we're making the best choice for the one and all in all dimensions across time and space. This is the challenge as we move ahead. We're feeling the spirit of the holidays right now, the holy days. And I feel more than ever, I've been feeling this every day leading up to Hanukkah, leading up to Christmas, leading up to this holy time. I've been feeling this knowing that we have done so much work as a collective consciousness that we are so anchoring in every sacred energy that is coming to us now. So of course, at the time of these high holy days, we're going to be anchoring them in more than ever. And we're going to be saying, hey, inside we're saying this, realizing this, conceiving of it and birthing it later as a collective. We're saying, hey, why aren't we honoring life like this in all moments? It's like, Every year when we come back to this time of the high holy days, as a collective, we're more and more evolved and and we're more and more anchoring these holy days in, carrying it into our everyday life. And this reminds me of the Sabbath or Shabbat, Shabbos, and how we have one day a week where we celebrate Shabbats from Friday night sundown to Saturday night sundown. And the goal of that Shabbat is to create Shabbat land where we recognize that Each moment exists within the one. Each moment is an eternity. So eventually we hope to get to the land of Shabbat where we're always in that unified place. We're not just celebrating it one day a week and and making that a special time. No, every moment is special. And that's what I feel about Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, and all these high holy days that we're celebrating. And even throughout the year, the holy days, we're all asking ourselves, why 
can we not celebrate this each moment? Because we are all, as a collective consciousness, reaching that place of timelessness. We're ascending in our minds. We're transcending timelines. We're coming to this realization of our eternal nature. The gift of eternal life that was given to, given to us at the beginning of creation, written in our, in our blueprint of our DNA. And we're saying, wow, so I want to apply everything to this knowing that we are eternal beings. And in applying this knowing to all of my experiences, I am creating a whole new experience. A new dimension is being born of the old one, out straight out of it. That's how dimensions are born. They don't just come out of somewhere else. They're born out of the old one. It's like a shell that we shed and, and, and a new thing comes out of that, like a butterfly, you know? And so I want you to remember that that's exactly what's happening. And for some of us, it's happening more subconsciously. And for some of us, very consciously. And it's happening everywhere across the world. So every time you're experiencing a holy moment, whether it's on the holiday, a high holy day, or a small holiday like Valentine's Day. Forget the old definitions of any of these holidays and tune into the feeling that you feel on that day and redefine it. And then when you have your definition of that holy moment, when you sit with that moment and what you're feeling, remember your eternal nature and ask, my, ask yourself, myself because we're one, ask, how can I celebrate this feeling, this holy sacred moment every moment? And we're doing this, like I said, however subconsciously or consciously, we're doing this as a collective. And every year, we pull these holy feelings deeper into our heart, like Christmas time, right? For everybody who's celebrating today. We say, why can't I feel this every moment? Oh, I can feel it every moment, any moment. And I'm going to. And before you know it, we're going to be a world that's living in this holy energy, in this exalted energy transcendental space literally we're just moving from the inside out so much so that we're we're turning inside out kind of like a caterpillar eats itself digests itself and from the inside out it is reborn and that's what we're doing as a collective we're turning our hearts inside out because we're opening so much that our heart is like a that toroidal field that just blasting open it's like a you know the taurus it's like a vortex and all we're doing is allowing it to flow removing the veils removing the obstructions the walls and so that energy is pushing out and our heart field is expanding and when we celebrate our timeless nature and when we celebrate our eternal nature we ground that knowing into this reality, crystallizing it, materializing a whole new world. And so that's why I love the holidays, so long as we can redefine them uniquely to each one. Asking ourselves, what is the best part of this holy day? What are my good feelings about this? What is my definition about this? And when I remember my eternal nature, how can I celebrate that good feeling? in each moment, any time of the year, in every moment, all throughout the year. Don't think of other people's definitions unless they add to yours and solidify it. Don't have conflicting definitions of these holidays. If part of you says, yeah, I love this part of Christmas, but I hate this part of it, well, redefine it. Realign it for yourself. Make sure all parts are in harmony so that what you're experiencing inside is a peaceful feeling about the time, about the moment, about the celebration. So that way, when you manifest a reality of that inner world, it's a, it's a harmonious reflection. It's only good. It's only joyful. So you don't see outside of yourself anymore these manifestations of these negative beliefs about the holidays or somebody else's negative beliefs. Because everything in there shines out here. So make sure that you redefine each holiday. I highly recommend 
researching the Kabbalah, researching the metaphysical aspects of these holidays, learning about the holidays of other cultures that fall at the same time because it's all about astrological alignments. It's all about the stars. And then redefine these high holy times for yourself. What is it really? What's really happening at this time of year? Look to nature. Because that's where all these metaphors and stories and rituals come from. The honoring of something in nature that is happening. A changing, a shifting of seasons. Whenever something is shifting in nature, that's when we have all of our high holy days in every religion, in every culture. It's always about the turn of the cycles, the turn of the seasons, the turn of the wheel in nature. So how can you look to nature and honor those special times? How can you relate it to what is shifting and changing inside of yourself and honor that as you honor it happening inside you and all around you in everyone and in everything? How can you look at holidays in that way to see how people were only ever honoring a very natural shifting of cycles that we see not only outside, but also inside of us? In the womb. (laughs) Now the hidden fear and ally as we move through. The two of wands. Wands is fire, it's spirit, and this, and you see he's holding the world in his hand. So this is all about weighing the opportunities, standing in the, in the doorway of opportunities ahead, holding the world in our hand and saying, the world is in my hands. I have every opportunity available to me, whatever I want to do. So let's look at what this would look like in a fearful mindset and how we can transform it into a helpful mindset as an ally. So the fearful side would look like this. I have no idea what opportunities are ahead. Are there any opportunities? Are there any good ones for me? Where do I go from here? I I feel content. I, I can't even imagine the next step. These are all not necessarily like scary fears, but just, um, they, they reflect a lack of control, a lack of confidence a lack of direction, a lack of being in our creative power. That's how the weaker side of this archetypal energy can look. Now, if we transform it into the ally, it would look something like this. I create the opportunities that are on their way. I refine them as I go through my experience, making sure that I ask for the opportunities that I wish to say yes to. I'm going to remember that the opportunities that come my way are always to teach me a lesson, which is always for my growth, because remember, challenge leads to chariot. The struggle leads to the ascension. So I'm going to simply ask. And in the asking is the receiving is the knowing. So it doesn't look like, oh, God, please bring me this. It's like giving thanks in advance. God, thank you for bringing me this. This is how you use the law of attraction appropriately. That's that's what right prayer looks like, okay? You don't say, oh, God, please bring me the right opportunities. I hope you'll bring them to me. No, that's the more fearful side of this card. We say, thank you, God, for bringing me exactly the opportunities that I need and that my highest self, regardless of what my lowest self thinks, my, what my highest self wants Thank you, God, because I know that every opportunity coming my way is tailor fit to my path and what I need to grow and reach the next level of my beingness. And in that thanks and in that knowing that those opportunities are on their way, tailor fit to our path and what we need to do to grow to get to that next level What we do when we do that is we expect it. And if we repeat this and fill ourselves with this knowing and with this thankfulness and gratitude that this this path of opportunity is always exactly what we need, nothing more, nothing less. When we fill ourselves with this knowing, 
none of those weaker aspects of this card can come into our consciousness. We'll never have a thought of, I don't know if the right opportunity is coming or is this opportunity that's here the right one? Well, of course it is because we're so filled with knowing that everything is tailor fit to our path that we're too busy manifesting that positive reality to allow anything that's not in alignment to come in, you see? So when we fill ourselves with the knowing that every opportunity comes our way is perfect and we ask for it, then it does not leave space for those other thoughts to come in. But we have to be consistent. We must fill ourselves with this and stay there, stay in that place, reminding ourselves as many times as we must, creating a solid aura of this knowing so that nothing out of alignment can penetrate it, you see? So no thoughts will be able to come in of, oh my gosh, what if I'm taking the wrong opportunity? What if I don't have any opportunities? What if I just sit here? No, because even if you're sitting there, you'll be happily sitting there because you'll have filled yourself with knowing that everything that we're doing, every opportunity we're taking, even if it's just the opportunity of taking a moment of silence, we will know that it's right for us and it's perfectly fit for our path. We will be content in whatever it is we're doing because we will know that whatever it is we're doing is exactly the opportunity we're meant to be taking on our path. So fill yourself with the knowing that each opportunity that comes our way, each moment, big or small, like a new job, a new relationship, or a moment to be silent, a moment to soak your feet, a moment to sit with your kid, a moment to laugh, a moment to eat, a moment to drink some water. It doesn't matter how big or how small these opportunities are. God doesn't care how big or small the opportunities are. That's us. We're the ones who, who define these things as big and small, important or less important. So if you want to be content with where you're at on your path and you want to take every opportunity to follow guidance of the creator and of your heart, then fill yourself with this knowing that we're always going to receive the opportunities for our highest growth in every moment. Nothing more, nothing less. Always perfect right on time. If you fill yourself with that, you will never have those fearful thoughts and then manifestation of those fearful thoughts because thoughts lead to things. So you see, if we hang on to the fear that we'll never get the opportunity that we want or maybe we took the wrong opportunity, If you hang on to those things, then you're going to manifest it because that will be your lesson. You will manifest the wrong opportunities, which deep down are the right ones for you to learn the lessons and move ahead. But if you wish to take this guidance that's being offered to us right now because we asked, then listen, this is what they're saying. Anyone has the ability to reclaim their power, to not be pulled under the wave, but to ride it, to surf it. To not be ruled by the stars, but to rule our stars. And this is how they're telling us we can do it right now. This is the archetypal energy collectively that's available to us right now. It's showing us our hidden fear as a collective. And it's showing us the opposite, which is always more important, the neutralizing thought. So how can you sit with the remembrance that everything that we need for wands, fire, spirit, everything that we need for our path, for our spiritual path, which trumps all, is right in our hands, always. We're always at the threshold of the perfect opportunity for our highest growth. Regardless of what our mind thinks, this is for our spirit, which then reflects into every dimension. Fill yourself with the knowing that you're always standing in the doorway of the perfect opportunity. And so long as you hold on to that, no thoughts out of alignment with that knowing can possibly enter. And therefore, you will not manifest your fears because it will, by law, by nature, be impossible. All right, and I feel called to pull one more card for the future of this cycle. Six. Six of Pentacles. This is the card of balance on the material plane. Always having what you need and giving when something is needed. Coming to this place of balance 
We can always reach this balance on the material plane when we remember that everything, regardless of how we judge it, is in perfect divine order and reflection of our source, where we come from. No matter how we see it, everything is always in perfect divine order. There's always a balance. And on this plane, we, we seek to always reflect that balance. Underneath it all, we're always in perfect balance, whether we see it or not. But it's our goal to become conscious of this balance, to work with the laws of balance, to work with the laws of nature, which are the laws of balance, justice, to use our material life as a ritual to honor that balance. So when you are in need, know it will be given to you. But you must honor the other side of that, that when others are in need, you always give. So long as, you know, so long as you're always giving, when there is a need, then you will know you will be given to when you're in need. So remember to give every opportunity for charity, you know, that feels right to you. When you can, when you can give, when your cup is overflowing only, then give. When you don't have enough to give, you just can't, and that's fine. That's when you have to open to receive. So remember this lesson as we move ahead into this new cycle. I think it's a fine place to start off the new year. To really examine how are we using our material life, our physical life in this world, on this planet? How are we using our life to bring in more awareness, acknowledgement, respect to that divine balance, justice, nature's law that rules us all? Where can we bring more balance into our lives on the material plane? What is not reflecting that balance of truth and nature's law? Where can we give more? Where can we receive more? Where can we do more and where can we do less? How can we be aware of a balance that's much bigger than us? And how can we be aware of our place in it? We're not here to be perfect. And that's great because we're always shifting and there's always a new level to reach and there's always a new action to take, thought to think, to bring more balance to our lives. That's the fun of this game, being here. So where in our lives can we be more active are more receptive? How can we be a representation of this divine balance, reflecting the purity and perfection of source and of nature? I'll leave you with that. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'm looking forward to re-watching this because I felt like I was really deep in there, especially in the middle of it, the peak, and I, I need to now watch this. <laughs> and there were so many points where I wanted to integrate and let it sink in, but I was there in that space. And so oftentimes I go and I rewatch these videos. Please feel free to leave a comment. Let me know what you gain from this or how it's reflected into your personal life, if you feel like sharing. These videos happen weekly, so four times a month. I use the moon as a time measure, nothing more. It's for the collective consciousness, but also the individual, because as in one, so in all. My job, my work that I do, is one-on-one -on -one readings. That's all I do, is tarot, in this way that you witnessed in this video. So if you want to have a personal reading ever, feel free to reach out. You can email me at the archetypal activator at gmail.com. You can send me a private message here on Facebook, Rivka Magic, R-I-V-K-A-H, Magic, M-A-G-I-C-K. 
You can also reach out to me on youtube.com slash Rebecca Magic. Rebecca, R-E-B-E-C-C-A, Magic, M-A-G-I-C-K. Don't forget to subscribe there because you'll get notifications every time I post a video. <sighs> Happy Holy Days. <clears throat> Merry Christmas. Happy Fourth Night of Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy New Year. Happy Solstice. And happy new moon solar eclipse. I'll see you guys next week for the first quarter activation. Shalom.